Hello friends, Tanya here, and today I have my 10 cards, all the kits for Spellbinders July 2023 card kits. We're going to jump right in with some ink spritzing. I have some oxide sprays and a mica stain. This is Twisted Citron and Mowed Lawn and, um, oh, I think it's Balsam, something Balsam. Um, and I am spritzing a piece of medium green cardstock. I want this to be a variegated color with some shine because we're going to die cut a bunch of things from this. I have some other cardstock that I had spritzed previously with some mica stain to create uh, lovely backgrounds. We are using the die of the month kit. This creates several components that will turn into a Christmas tree of flowers. Here I am assembling the different pieces to create this tree. We've got the green background that does the leaves for the floral bunches that are going to create this tree. And there's lots of little pieces to it. We've got the two poinsettias on this one with some white berries. They could be red berries I or gold or whatever color you chose, but I chose white. And it also has a cute little Christmas rose. There are two roses in this die set. There are two pieces to each of the roses, a background and a more detailed piece. Okay, three pieces. There's also a little center that goes in the middle of those little roses. There are the two different roses fit on different green backgrounds. The smaller one goes on a larger cluster. And there I have assembled all of those floral elements. There is a background die so that you can um, have a predetermined shape to do your floral bunch tree. And you can also take that die that cut out all of these green pieces and do a little embossing so that it'll help you line your items up or you can do like I did and just have your die sitting next to you so you can see where these go and kind of line them up as you assemble your pieces. This was really not difficult. You could skip the visual guide and just place them on here how they make sense and it would actually go pretty quickly. Now here I'm trying to figure out exactly how those leaves sandwich in together or snug in next to each other. And it is, um, it does just manage to stay inside that tree. Actually, maybe one of my poinsettia edges didn't. Anyway, then we put our top piece in for our Christmas tree. And here we have our little star. All of these components are in the same die set. I'm also going to take the Adorning the Tree 3D Embossing Folder of the Month with some white cardstock. I've trimmed this down to, I believe this is three and a half, no, four and a half by six and a half, because of course I'm going to make a five by seven card because I just can't resist. <laughs> this is the Slippery When Wet um, Lunar Paste from um, Simon Hurley. This is in the Spellbinder shop. You can get it in a number of places. I like to use it kind of like a gilding polish and I like to apply it with my finger. I get the most control so I can keep it for the most part just on the raised bits on this embossed uh, panel. And this 3D embossing folder has so much detail and it is just gorgeous. It is very, very Christmas. There's some really pretty uh, vintage style um, ornaments, baubles all over this. It reminds me of the old fashioned glass um, bulbs. Here I'm cleaning my finger and the work surface at the same time just with some water that I've spritzed onto the work surface. I did add some extra layers of cardstock behind this panel and now we're going to adhere that to our 5x7 card base. And you create a 5x7 card base by cutting a full sheet of cardstock down to 7 by 10 inches and scoring at 5 inches. Now we're going to adhere our main tree. I've added some extra cardstock behind that also. And then after I get that set under a heavyweight block to let that dry a little bit, it is being adhered to a very textured surface. I am taking a piece of this 
Oh, gosh. <laughs> Dimensional foam. Boy. Hmm. Uh, man, I'm tucking that right at the top of the tree. I took the backer sheet off of both sides and we'll adhere our star at the top there. Next, I'm going to take the Glimmering Christmas Floral, Flora, which is the Glimmer of the Month kit, and I need some sentiments. So we're going to take the two sentiments that come in this uh, set. One is a larger Merry Christmas, and then the smaller sub sentiment, which we're going to put on the inside of the card. I have some polished brass, uh, glimmer foil here and I'm trimming that to fit under my smaller piece uh, smaller plate just going to tack that down with some best ever craft tape and then we will put that on the glimmer uh, machine now I have that heated up on the side I have run that through my die cutting machine through my spell binders uh, platinum I have the large one, which is why you never see me do the cutting or the foiling with the machine because it just does not fit. It has to stay in its designated spot. Just trust me, it's the same. You crank it through. I did cut a couple more layers of cardstock for the larger sentiment so that I could stack that on the front of the card for a little extra impact. We're also going to take the sub sentiment and adhere that to the inside of the card. This way I don't risk ruining the rest of the card by um, trying to foil directly inside, which is an added benefit to having coordinating dies. So you can do your embossing, stamping, foiling, however you are creating, and then add it to the inside of the card as a component. I did take a couple more of the um, poinsettias, die cut those and assembled those. This is the smallest of the poinsettias. There are four different sizes. And next we're going to Actually, we're moving on to card number two. This is the wax seal of the month. So you'll get a wax seal with the handle and a package of beads in the wax seal of the month. This month, it's this pretty little poinsettia joy and uh, crimson, classic crimson, I think is the name of it, <clears throat> for the color of the wax beads. I have melted the wax. I have a little silicone mat here. And I have a deco color uh, paint pen and it's in gold and you can very carefully apply this to your raised elements on the wax seal to let those stand out even more. Now I'm pulling out the large die of the month and I'm going to assemble a bunch of the components in this die set. Here is the little gingerbread man. He comes with the makings for the frosting. We've got two eyes, we've got some buttons. These are actually all on that same strip of circles that die cuts the berries. These work as buttons or berries. These are the ones without the hole in the top. Next, we've got our cute little smile. I've cut all of these with the brushed white cardstock from the Spellbinders shop. And then we have the cute little frosting squiggles on each of the arms and legs. Now I did, for demonstration purposes, put the glue on the gingerbread man. But when I have finished assembling the three more that I had die cut, I actually used my reverse tweezers to hold them and then dot some glue on the actual frosting. And that seemed to work a little better, maybe because I had better control using the reverse tweezer. I hope you can't hear my dog barking. She probably saw some deer in the yard. Oh, heavens, Lord forbid. <laughs> Next, we have a candy cane, and it has these stripes. And you would think it's really hard to figure out which stripe goes where, but they're really um, not that particular for every single stripe. There are a few that are um, pretty specific, like the one at the top of the arch and the one on each side of that, but I'm... I'm pretty sure you wouldn't be able to tell if you put the rest of them in the wrong spot. They actually go together pretty quickly. I love that they have the coordinating stripes so that you can make this two-toned very easily. And all of the stripes cut in one go. It's all on one die. 
I love when they group those little tiny dies together on one solid piece because it is so much easier to handle. I did also make a few more of these with, uh, off camera. Next we have the mistletoe, at least I think that's what this is. Um, I'm cutting, excuse me, I am adding white berries to these. And I think I chose to use the ones without the holes. You could use the ones with the little hole or without either one. There's two pieces to the mistletoe. And then we have the holly. And I chose some red glitter berries for these. There's only berries on this large branch. And then there are several individual holly leaves, three of them in three different sizes that will add some nice fullness to your different arrangements. These are really easy to find where the berries go. You just add a little dot of glue and add your berries. Okay, moving on to the rest of this card. There are a lot of components to this card, I'm telling you right now. We are going to use the Stitched Snowflake card front. This is the die, uh, Stitch Die of the Month, and it has this beautiful background with a snowflake that you can stitch. I've taken some crochet thread here. This is um, not yarn, it's crochet thread. So it's for like tatting lace. However, I've used it as strings for tags and all kinds of other crafty paper crafting things. Now I am, am going to use this to do my stitching on this snowflake. The hardest part of this stitching is preventing yourself, getting yourself into a rhythm that doesn't get your thread all tangled up in the different branches of the snowflake. That was the hardest thing for me. Once I got that under control, it went actually pretty quickly. It probably took me about 10 or 15 minutes to stitch this snowflake. Now you can do a circular um, stitch around this circle at the top and bottom of the snowflake or you can create like a star in that and that's what I ended up doing here. There's our completed snowflake. We're going to pull out the Christmas wrap pattern. This is the embossing folder of the month. It is so pretty. I actually I don't know, this one feels more versatile to me than the other one that came out this month. Next, we're gonna pull out Salvage Patina and Mowed Lawn Distress Oxide Spray and a piece of white cardstock. And I'm spritzing the heck out of this. I want this green and teal background for behind our snowflake. I just was, that's the color that I had in my head. <laughs> Now I cut out the card front piece and now I'm going to take one of the essential stylish ovals and die cut this piece out. So the card front die does this piercing pattern in the cardstock and it cuts it out to fit an A2 size card front. Well, I am of course going to make another five by seven card. So I decided to die cut that with the largest of the ovals and create a center piece for our card front. Next, I took that piece of cardstock that I um, embossed with the embossing folder of the month, and I'm adhering that down to the front of a five by seven card. This is again, four and a half by six and a half inches. I've added extra cardstock behind each of these layers. And now I am adding the snowflake to the center of our card. Yes, I do tend to center everything. I don't know why, I just do. <laughs> now we're taking this wax seal that I created earlier, and we're going to add that as one of the components of the center piece of this card. We're going to take the mistletoe and the holly and create some little green swashes on each side of our main images. We're going to take a um, candy cane and the gingerbread man and we're going to tuck those in amongst the greenery in the center of this snowflake. Just trying to get the maximum amount of these images showing because we put all the work into assembling them. We want all of the things to show. And then I'm going to use some liquid glue to adhere our wax seal. You could go ahead and melt a little wax there to adhere it or use some dry adhesive, but this worked really well. 
I'm going to take the Glimmer Foil of the month again and use the large and small sentiments. Foil those in some gold or polished brass foil and adhere them to the inside of the card. Again, it really is useful to have these die cut sentiments so that you don't mess up the inside of your card after you've put all the work into the front of the card. I am placing the sub sentiment a little to the right of the main sentiment so that I can add some more items to the inside of the card. I have the smaller branch of mistletoe here. I've trimmed it a little bit so it'll tuck right in next to the word Mary. And then I'm going to take these three individual leaves of holly and I'm going to nestle those in underneath the word Christmas. I didn't end up having to trim any of that and I made it so it looked like it's one branch of leaves and we'll take three of the red glitter cardstock cut out berries and add those on the inside of the card also on top of the holly branch. This actually comes together quite nicely and it doesn't make it difficult to close the card or for things to lay flat. I really like to add these extra details to the inside of my card. Now for card number three, I don't know if any of you have gotten a hold of the Better Press system, but I'm telling you this is amazing. It is another game changer. It creates detail perfectly. Now I'm using the Delicata Celestial Copper uh, ink pad here. This is not one of the Better Press specific ink pads. This one is one of my favorite pigment inks because it really retains the very fine details of your stamps. So I thought I'd give it a whirl with our Better Press. It does keep the ink wet long enough and it does preserve that absolutely gorgeous detail. This was my very first try with this plate and this ink and look at that oh another reason I wanted to use the Delicata ink was so that I could do some Copic coloring which I did. Next we're going to use the postage edge rectangles and we're going to die cut this um, better press um, image. <laughs> my words I'm having troubles with my words. <laughs> And then we're going to actually take the sentiment, which is this lovely, swoopy, Merry Christmas. And I'm going to center that um, inside one of the other postage edge dies. So I am carefully lining that all up with my platen, that clear plate on top. It has the same markings. I'm able to see exactly where that um, sentiment is placed on the magnetic platform beneath this and that clear plate is suspended on magnetic spring-loaded feet on each corner of the base uh, of this system. Now I'm going to once again use the Delicata Celestial Copper ink to do our sentiment and look at that it's just gorgeous it turned out perfect one pass that's it amazing. I die cut that out and we're going to use more of the postage edge rectangles to die cut. Another layer to go behind this. I did trim this card down. It was going to be a five by seven card but it's five by six and a half inches so that the um, postage edge die is centered on here nicely. Now the space on each end is a little wider than top to bottom but that doesn't really, it doesn't bother me. We'll keep it. <laughs> now I'm layering the shim, uh, excuse me, brushed white postage edge largest layer down with some extra pieces of cardstock behind that. And then the main image with extra pieces of cardstock behind that and one layer of extra cardstock behind the sentiment that is centered right in the middle. Now I couldn't resist putting another layer of the uh, press plate, better press plate on the inside of the card. I die cut that again with the postage edge layer and I am using just heavyweight white cardstock. I'm not using the specialty cotton cardstock. This is 120 pound white cardstock 
And it did work very well. You can subtly feel the impression. It's not as good as the cotton paper that you can get from Spellbinder, specifically for the Better Press system, but it does work great. I did use a sentiment from the clear stamp and die set of the month to stamp on the inside. On to card number four. We're going to go masculine with this one. I have some timber cardstock from Spellbinders and some, I think this is polished brass. It might be matte. No, that's satin, satin gold. Yeah. We're also going to use these stylish ovals to uh, create another centerpiece for a five by seven card. I'm adhering, excuse me, not adhering. I am tacking down our glimmer foil, which is this gorgeous um, central, oh, I don't know, background kind of. So I did run this through and found that it did not foil perfectly. I did go on a little bit of a foiling craze with this foil plate because I really love pine cone things and um, found that if I let that plate heat a little longer, it creates perfect foiling even on this timber cardstock, which I expected it to do because the Spellbinders cardstock, even the color stuff is gorgeous. So you can see that the foiling was not perfect on this first one that I did. I'm still going to use it. It has a little bit of a rustic feel and I'm going to cover up the part that did not foil perfectly. Now to create the background, I'm using three colors of Distress Oxide. This is Walnut Stain, um, Walnut Stain, Brush Corduroy. Oh gosh, I can't think of the third one right off the top of my head. But three of the brown card uh, distress oxides, you can see that it's not a very smooth blend, but that's okay. Don't worry, we're going to fix that. I had just re-inked all of these ink pads and did not wait long enough so that it was very saturated. We're going to take the Crooked Broomstick Distress Mica Stain or Distress Mica Spray and spritz that all over and we're also going to add some white spatters excuse me water spatters with some quote unquote clean clear water that's it doesn't matter that it's not exactly clean <clears throat> and you can see that this foils gorgeously with the matte gold card uh, foil here you can see my not perfect foiling and this is after i let that plate heat up it foiled absolutely perfectly on the car colored cardstock and on the piece of cardstock that we ink blended. I'm also going to pull out an oldie but a goodie. This is the wood grain background emboss, excuse me, foiling plate. And look at that. Oh, I love this. I forgot that it even existed and I was digging through my supplies and found it and I had to use it with this, with this uh, glimmer foil. So we're going to take one of the coordinating, uh, one of the other layers of oval. This one's a little smaller. I've added some scrap pieces of cardstock to add a little height. And we're going to add that behind our beautiful foiled centerpiece. I'm using the Christmas wrap pattern, which looks rather pine cone-ish to me. Kind of a um, graphic style pine cone look to it. Still Stunning. And I am using that piece of cardstock that I ink blended and spritzed. Actually, I made two of those, one that I foiled and one that I'm using here. And I don't know what I'm going to do with the other one yet because I actually didn't create anything with that yet. So I cut that down to four and a half by six and a half. And I've adhered that to a five by seven card base. I did add extra cardstock again behind that embossed panel and behind our center piece here I took one of the other pieces of cardstock that I had foiled with some I think that's the espresso foil and we're adhering that to the inside of the card because why not <laughs> it's just beautiful we'll add a little extra weight there and now I want to make this into a masculine uh, birthday card so I am taking the everyday sentiments dies by Simon Hurley that's also available in the Spellbinder shop. 
and we're going to die cut the shadow layer from the same timber cardstock as we use for that large oval and we are die cutting the detail element of that sentiment out of the scraps of the ink blended and spritzed cardstock so that it matches the background perfectly just using my barely art precision glue here I have put an extra layer of white cardstock behind the detailed pieces so that they stand up a little bit away from the shadow element. I think all of that dimension really makes a difference in the impact of your card. We are, I did not forget to add an extra layer behind that tittle even. And that's, that's a little, that takes a little talent to get that lined up. I will admit that it would be easier just to put that straight down on the shadow and you could you really could or put a gem there now i'm going to add our sentiments on the bottom portion to cover up our less than perfect foiling and just because i really want that wood grain to shine through the center it you could certainly add a little extra something in the middle there maybe a pine cone or a branch of greenery that would be pretty too but i really wanted that wood grain to show through on to card number five we're going to pull out the glimmer foil again and no that's not the glimmer this is the clear stamp and die of the month this is also a frame it happens to have a coordinating die for both the outer and the inner portions i took a piece of watercolor paper and i did a, a wash of green in the background because I am going to watercolor the rest of this also. I decided to stamp this in um, VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. <clears throat> and I'm double stamping this after I did my watercoloring. I wanted that to stand out um, really well. I do like to sharpen up my black lines with the with a second stamping after I've done my coloring. Now I'm going to die cut these with the coordinating dies and there we have our frame. I'm going to pull out the postage edge slimline dies this time. I don't know why but I was really inspired to use this postage edge series. I did modify that. I did some partial die cutting to get the size I wanted for a mini slimline and then we're taking the Christmas wrap pattern again I really like how much this reminds me of pine cones, which is why I chose to use this embossing folder. Now we're going to adhere this to a three and a half by six and a half inch mini slimline card. I have used my little gift card holder die that is from an older die of the month kit. And I am using this to create a gift hold, gift card holder element on the inside. We've centered our postage edge mini slimline die here. And now I have our frame all adhered and it's time to add our sentiments. We're using the two cent two of the sentiments from the stamp set. These all have coordinating dies. Every image and every sentiment in this particular stamp set has a coordinating die which I love I just really enjoy being able to idiot proof my card construction because if this is a separate element then I don't have to worry about did I stamp it perfectly straight did I stamp a good clean impression I can keep trying until I get what I need I use the VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink again and I use some clear embossing powder to create those. Now I have several layers of cards, extra cardstock behind our sentiment, both the sub sentiment and the main sentiment. And maybe you can see what I did wrong on this card front already. It took me a little longer to figure it out. I actually adhered that frame to the card front upside down. Why does it matter? Well, because otherwise your pine cones are hanging upside down down so I did peel that off carefully and glue it on the right way but not until right about right about here is where I figure out that I messed it up so you can still see that the pine cones are upside down <laughs> oh wow so I fixed that then I went to um 
working on the inside of the card. I opened up this card and laid it on the inside of my Misty. I'm going to stamp off once we have the antique linen uh, distracts oxide here and this does not fit completely on the inside of the card that's okay it hangs off the side a little bit and we're going to use the um you know what this is not versifying claire nocturne ink it's versifying claire fallen leaves ink i use that for the stamping on the front and the back all right that was card number five now we're on to card number six this is shabby shutters distress oxide i have a piece of four and a quarter by five and a half inch cardstock that i'm going to use um, to create a colored background for more elements here i think i forgot to add this in the video i'll tell you well not this i'll tell you a little later <laughs> this is the essential duo lines glimmer ovals and these coordinate with the postage edge ovals which is what we're going to use to create a backdrop for our images on this card i'm going to use the dotted edge not the actual postage edge and here i'm lining this all up on our cardstock with some matte champagne foil no satin champagne i keep calling it matte it's satin and I've lined that up. Now we'll put that on our glimmer foil platform, put our um, plates on top with our shims that I need for my machine. And there is our beautiful double lined foiled image. Next, we'll cut that out with the postage edge die. And we're going to take a piece of cardstock that I have already ink blended with those three colors of Distress Oxides and sprayed with the Tree Lot Distress Mica Stain. Now we're going to take that piece that I've cut to four and a half by six and a half inches and run it through the die cut machine in the, um, what is that, adorning, adorning the Tree 3D embossing folder. Now I happen to have the Fern Gilding Polish from Cosmic Shimmer. The... Um, there is a green luster in the Spellbinder shop that you can pick up that is almost identical. It's more glittery though. So I'm loading up my little sponge here and I am going to apply this to the raised portions of this embossing folder. I think it really is a beautiful tone on tone shimmeriness. It really makes that pattern stand out a little more without being in your face. And one of my favorite parts of these gilding polishes is that their application tool is part of the lid. Next, we're going to adhere that right to the card front. And again, extra layers of cardstock. I have learned my lesson um, the hard way. I do so much mixed media stuff that I need that extra layer to prevent my whole card from warping later. Um, because I'm not like letting these layers dry for hours and hours between using them. Next, we have this cute little gnome whom I, I assembled. I guess I forgot to include that too. Boy, I tell you, editing these is interesting. <laughs> um, I am adhering the holly and the little candy cane in the stocking with him. Now, the stocking is created from that die of the month, the large die of the month also. And I had um, Glimmer Hot foiled the stockings with the plaid tidings glimmer foil plate that came out last year in one of the christmas collections and it is gorgeous i just love that glimmer foil plate and i used mm, it's one of the really deep i think it's called forest and um phone box red yes uh to dot to foil the plaid I'm also using the Glitter Wishes foil plates that came out last year. I foiled tons of those and I'll show you those a little later. And I just can pull them out and die cut the pieces that I want and um, have those quickly able to be put on a card. This one says, Dear Santa, it wasn't me. And on the inside, I put Sending Christmas Cheer. These were foiled with the Aura foil, I believe. Next, we're moving on to card number seven. We're going to use the brand new Essential Stylus Ovals. 
And these are a long oval. I really enjoy these because you can use them on your slimline, a mini slimline, and this happens to be a four bar card. Four, by, four bar cards are three and a half by five inches. They're like a note card size. And I cut the pink cardstock to fit that exactly. And then we have this beautiful oval that I die cut from some brush white cardstock and embossed with the Ordorning the Tree 3D embossing folder of the month. Then we have our stocking that is assembled with the red cardstock foiled with red foil with that plaid tidings foil plate. And then I used glitter to do the toe and the cuff of the stocking. Um, and there's two layers of glitter because the top of the stocking has some slits cut in it for the detail of like a little fold or ruffle in that cuff. I have the mistletoe and one of the candy canes on the inside of that. And then we have another one of the strips from the Glitter Wishes Glimmer Foil set from last year. This one says, it's snowing glitter. I thought that was totally appropriate with all of the glitter cardstock that I used on the front of this card. We'll have that span our little stocking. And then inside, we're going to have another sentiment from that same sentiment set. This says, have a sparkling Christmas. It was just a little too wide for the inside of this card, so I just trimmed it apart a little bit and we'll adhere those to the inside of the card. Now I thought I was adhering this strip straight. Yeah, not quite. So I purposely made the second section not straight also. So it looks intentional. <laughs> and that finishes our red stocking. On to card number eight. Holy cow, right? <clears throat> So I've got a piece of cardstock that I'm going to trim down for another mini slimline card that will be three and a half by six and a half inches. I've got some antique linen and the um, crooked bro broomstick. Yes, that's the name of it. Um, Distress mica stain. And I've spattered this cardstock with both of these inks. And we have this beautiful shimmery and speckly background. I took the precision layering mini slimline dies and die cut that and I have all of these different elements from both the die of the month and the large die of the month kits. Now I had taken components from these two dies, die sets, and laid them onto my grid mat here and loosely got the idea of the pattern I wanted to create. I used some press and seal to keep all of those pieces together in roughly the area I want them to be. And now I'm going to adhere them to our piece of cardstock that I've cut down to, I believe this is three and a quarter by six and a quarter. And I'm just going to use some of the bigger pieces first. And I'm trying to do um, the rules of three. So I'm kind of trying to do like images in a triangular component. I had actually cut out a whole and assembled a whole bunch of different elements from these two different die sets and didn't have a solid plan for any of them. Sometimes it's easier to just take your dies, cut them out and create your different elements so that you can then go ahead and let your creativity run wild. Sometimes the ideas go faster when you have the assembled pieces and then you aren't, um, you don't have to use the brain power to create a pattern or a, a plan for a card until you actually have the pieces put together. So I had a bunch of pieces to use and I thought this would be a really fun way to use them. I did end up going back and die cutting a, f a couple more stars. And then I found the cute little bows and some of the berries to add in and use as fillers for some of the bigger white spaces. Now that I have it all adhered down, I'm going to trim them off with my scissor here and get ready to adhere this to our 
three and a half by six and a half inch white cardstock base. This is my mini slimline. Um, this is a great size for all kinds of things, including, including putting gift cards in. And it is a mailable size. I don't know if you know this, but your the small side of your card or item needs to be at least three and a half inches to go through the regular mail. Here are some of those uh, pieces of cardstock that I have foiled with lots of different sentiments. I've taken lots, uh, taken several of my foiling sentiment sets and foiled them in several different colors, like seven different colors, each of them. Three silvers, three golds, and a black. And I have them in a bag that I can just pull out and um, look at the sentiments and figure out which one I want to use. Here's another example of that. This bag is full of foiled sentiments. Then I can just use coordinating dies to die cut the different sentiments and the smaller ones all use the same dies. <clears throat> and some of the larger ones have their own dies. Now I have the Twinkle Lights and Cozy Nights. This is from the Glitter Wishes sentiment foil sets again. And I've trimmed that so that it will fit on the front of this card. And then I'm using the scraps from where I die cut this to add extra height behind this. You don't have to do anything super fancy. Use what you got and those scraps, you know what? I had actually thrown those scraps away and then went back to the trash, pulled them out because then I don't have to trim down any other cardstock to create the scraps that I need to go behind these sentiment strips. I thought that was just perfect. So if you do the same thing as I did, where you foil a whole bunch of those sentiments and have those ready to use, then you might want to hang on to the scraps after you die cut them so you can add extra height behind your sentiment strips too. I feel like this um, idea of a sheet full of sentiments is perfect and Simon Says Stamps sells packets of uh, printed ones this way. I think using your foil sentiments this way is a great way to stretch your supply and streamline your card making. Christmas card making season has definitely begun. It is Christmas in July everywhere I look in the crafting community. And there are so many more gorgeous Christmas products coming out this month and next month. And I suppose for the next three months, just keep your eyes peeled. There's so much great stuff. So that was card number eight. Now we're on to card number nine and I got the ink blending bug. I decided I wanted to do some ink blending in not particularly Christmas colors. This is tumbled glass, salty ocean, blueprint sketch, and wilted violet. These are all pretty freshly re-inked so nice and juicy. I highly recommend making sure you keep your ink pads nice and juicy. It makes the ink blending process so much more pleasurable. I have a acrylic block that I'm using to help hold pressure down on the cardstock so it doesn't move around and so I don't get inky fingerprints all over everything. I use some pearlized water, which is perfect pearls, in some water to spritz that. Let that dry and now I have the stitched snowflake card front die again. Die cut that out of my cardstock. This is the stitching die of the month and I've got our snowflake. I die cut that from some white glitter cardstock and a scrap piece of white cardstock. This is some 120 pound white cardstock and adhered those together before I go ahead and stitch them with some gold thread. This is very fine thread. <clears throat> So I'm actually going to double that over and tie a knot in the end. Is that knot going to be big enough to uh, prevent it from pulling through the holes? No, no ma'am it is not. <laughs> but it will keep the ends together so they don't come apart. So I'm going to come through one of these holes and I did not make sure I poked them all out and I adhered that thread end to the center of the card with a piece of card uh, tape went through all of those. Now we are going to also use one of the tiny merriment um, dies 
that is an additional die set that coordinates with that snowflake die set. I used the center that comes with the set and stitched that also. And here we have peace with a coordinating banner. I'm die cutting that with shimmer, no, mirror gold cardstock. Now I need a backer for that because the piece portion is pushed through the cardstock. It's great to have a contrasting color behind that. So I just cut another of the outline banner die, the backer, and I'm going to use some Barely Art glue to adhere that behind our piece die cut banner. Now, since I use glitter cardstock, it takes an extra long amount of time to get that all to adhere together. We're going to use the precision layering dies because I want to make this a little smaller than an A2 size card front. So I die cut this to four by five and a quarter using the precision layering dies. We'll center that on our card front. Yes, I did make an A2 size card. I feel like I have to make at least one A2 size card in every one of these 10 cards kits. 10 cards videos, there we go. Now I'm adhering this snowflake just by putting glue on the stitching. I did that with the other snowflake that I used too. Just adding glue over the stitching only because the stitching is going to be the part that has contact with the paper. So I'm carefully centering this. The uh, the poke the piercing in the cardstock leaves an opening for your snowflake. So it's really easy to center in there. Now I'm taking the fallout pieces from the shimmery white or the brushed cardstock from the first card, and I'm popping those in the recessed areas in the snowflake for this card. I really like how that highlights the center of the card and it coordinates with the piece that I stitched to go in the middle. It did take about 15 minutes for the center that I'm about to adhere to the snowflake for that to actually dry enough for this to be fiddled with again. So I'm just gonna put it under the block and go on to something else. Now that that has dried completely, I'm going to add our piece and that's going to take some time to dry also. Glue does not stick super quickly to anything glitter. So the back of that glitter paper adheres quickly. Things adhering to the front of it take forever. <laughs> now we're going to use some pretty little rhinestones here. These are clear iridescent rhinestones from my stash. They're not even labeled so I don't even know where I got them. Um, I'm adding those to the center of the piercing in the, each of those insets and a scatter above and below diagonally across our card and one right smack in the middle of the stitched element in the middle of the snowflake. <clears throat> Inside the card, we're going to use the Pine Cones and Holly stamp set again. I have some Versifying Claire Nocturne ink here and we're going to stamp Merry Christmas Warm wishes from all of us on the inside of this card. All right, can you believe it? Card number 10. We're gonna pull out the glimmering Christmas flora again, which is the glimmer of the month. And I decided to do some Copic coloring. I'm doing two shades at most. The pine cones get two shades of brown. I believe these are E10, so like E13 and E18, something like that. And I used a couple of reds for the poinsettias. And I thought I was going to use two greens for the pine boughs, but I ended up only using one. I'm just filling these in. They are um, not super difficult to color. I'm just doing little flicks of green. And I did end up going back and filling in more of the green right up to the border of that frame. These little seed pods, I'm doing a uh, sagey, really light sagey green and a purpley pink color for the top portions. I had to go do a search online for seed pods in Christmas arrangements and it turns out they're brown to this silvery green color with maroon and burgundy and pinky purpley different tops. 
And then I decided to go with an orangey red for the berries and added some yellow centers to the poinsettias. Next, I took these shabby shutters, Distress Ink, not the oxides, the plain ink, and I um, ink blended over the entire thing because I really wanted it to not be stark white. Then I am going to die cut the center with the coordinating die. Love that. I, I just really love coordinating dies for all kinds of things. I wish there was a coordinating die for the outside, but this would be pretty easy to fussy cut too. There is an extra layer of cardstock that I die cut with that center frame and then trimmed down so it would fit behind our main piece here. And this is another note card or four bar card, three and a half by five inches. Um, and then I took some brushed white cardstock, die cut that with the center piece, and then layered two extra layers of cardstock behind that. And I'm going to pop that right in the center here. So we have a little raised panel there. Instead of an inset, we have a raised panel. I don't know why I didn't just, you know, uh, not cut the center out of that cardstock. I think my plan changed partway through the card. We adhere the coordinating sentiment that's been die cut and layered with three ex excuse me two extra pieces of cardstock and we have the inside sentiment now I had accidentally gotten some Copic marker where I didn't want it so embellishments <laughs> we have these pretty ruby I think they're ruby radiance or something like that they're a, an iridescent red gem from Trinity Stamps and you can use whatever you'd like. I just needed to cover up some ink spatter that I didn't want to throw away this panel from. That is card number 10. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun creating it as always. Here are some quick shots of the cards that I made. Let me know which ones were your favorite and give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you've subscribed Check that description box below. As always, I have the products listed and linked there. I'm sure that the product list is going to be ginormous for this video. So be sure to click the visual link in the description box because that'll show you all of the products. If um, And until next time, here are a couple more videos I thought you might enjoy. Bye-bye.